Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the No Sword Gamer. I have another plug and play unit to review, this time the Disney Princess plug and play by Jack's Pacific. As you would expect with these plug and play units, you have a single video and single audio RCA composite style cable. The unit itself is nice and pink, has some glitter. You can see the glitter sticker by the joystick and in the uh, joystick ball on top. A couple buttons there, even though they both basically do the same thing. We have an on off button, red light indicator telling me that it does work, a menu button. On the side, you can see the princess says, help, we're stuck in this plug and play castle. Someone save us on the side of it. And in the back, there is a game key slot. It actually, they actually made a game key cartridge that had a couple extra games for it that you could insert in there. And it runs on four AA batteries, as you can see here, because I forgot to screw on the uh, battery compartment door there. But anyways, let's go ahead and take the Disney Princess plug and play system. It's a nice solid uh, unit, feels nice and uh, solid as a joystick. Let's plug it in and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the games. The Disney Princess Plug and Play was made by Jack Specific and carries a copyright year of 2005. It contains nine mini games and has the ability to save the top three scores for each game. At the menu screen, you can select the game in which princess realm you want the game to take place in. You could choose from Cinderella to Snow White to Ariel or Belle. Before each game is a simple instruction screen, which is always a nice touch for a plug and play system. The first game is Balloon Bounce. Here you move your princess left and right, bouncing balloons off of her, trying to keep them off the floor for as long as possible. When one touches the floor, they all burst, ending your game. It's simple and fun for what it is. The second game is Bubble Machine. Here you aim with the joystick and hold the button down to blow a bubble and release it to shoot it at various objects. Holding the button down longer will make your bubble bigger, but it will also move slower. Your goal is to hit every object indicated on the sides as quickly as possible. And it's another well-made minigame. Next up is Decorate the Castle. Here you look at a room for a few moments before the objects inside disappear. Then you have to select the missing objects from memory. Most of these are easy, but in some rooms, two objects can look very similar. This is another game where your goal is to complete it as fast as you can. For the fourth game, we have Design a Necklace. Here you move a basket left and right, trying to collect specific gems in order as quickly as possible to make a necklace. Catching the wrong gem will actually cost you a gem you already collected, and the game speeds up as time goes on. Next, we have Memory Pairs. This is a basic memory match game where your goal is to match all 10 pairs as quickly as possible. For the sixth game, we have Choose a Chest. This is basically a kid-friendly variation of Three Card Monty. In two chests are coins, with one chest having more than the other. In the third chest is a villain. You are shown the contents and then the chests are closed and shuffled around. You have to pick one chest. Picking a chest with coins in it adds to your score based on how many coins are in them, while picking the villain chest will end your game. Personally, this was the most enjoyable game on the system. For the seventh game, we have Music Mimic, where you use the joystick to copy a pattern done by a character on the screen. Just like the classic electronic game Simon, the patterns continue getting longer and longer with each successive turn. Your goal is to last as long as you can without making an error. Next up is Princess Party, where your princess becomes a waitress for her guests. Here she must fill the orders of her guests by selecting the appropriate items in time. I must say it felt a little weird to play a Cinderella who, despite her royalty, was back to serving her demanding stepmother and stepsisters. I guess the royal waitstaff went on strike that day. For the ninth and final game, we have Coins and Wishes. Your goal is to drop a coin in a moving well and catch the hearts that come up, but as the game continues, Plinko-style pegs get added into the mix, making it more difficult to hit the well. The game ends when four coins hit the ground. Graphically speaking, the game looks pretty decent with all the characters and objects easily recognizable. The music is somewhat generic and stays the same for all the games, but the sound effects were decent. And naturally, this is a very family-friendly game as the game was targeted for young kids, with the games themselves usually starting at a very slow pace. At the time I researched on eBay, loose versions of this plug-and-play were going for about $10, including shipping. There was also a used game key cartridge that could be plugged into the unit that contained two extra games, one called Memory Chase and one called Rescue Race, and that was available for under $6. So what did I think of the Disney Princess plug-and-play system? Actually, for what it is, I'm very impressed. You have a good selection of mini-games, so even if one or two of them are not enjoyable or too difficult for your child, there is still plenty to choose from. I also like how the graphics of the game adjust for each princess, so Ariel will often be under the sea, while Belle from Beauty and the Beast might have the games take place outside in the snow. 
If I had one criticism of the game, it would be the generic music. These movies had some great music and excellent songs, including some of this Disney music would have been a great touch. Now obviously, I am not the target audience for this plug and play, and I don't see myself playing this one again, so I'm not going to rank this one like I do other plug and play systems. However, I will say that one of my girls really, and I mean really, enjoyed the system. Jack Specific really knew their target audience and delivered a well-made product for them. So if you come by one of these at a thrift store or garage sale and have a young Disney princess fan in your life who also likes video games, you might want to pick this one up. So what do you think of the Disney princess plug and play? Feel free to let me know in the comments below. Also feel free to click the like and subscribe buttons. If you'd like to support the show, you could do so at Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash noswearegamer. You can also follow me on both the Facebook or the Twitter. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day and I look forward to seeing you next time in the next episode of the Nose for Gamer. Take care and have a great day.